assalamu alaikum uh, dear students uh, welcome to uh, lecture number 1 part 2 uh, we were discussing introduction to elementology and host parasite relationship so the lecture outcomes or the sorry the outlines of today lectures are introduction to elementology and host parasite relationship and lecture outcomes are after watching and listening to this lecture students will know about uh, helminthology and host parasite relationship so uh, and to the continuation of our previous lecture we were discussing uh, symbiosis different types of symbiosis and uh, today uh, we will discuss uh, mutualism what is mutualism so uh, mutualism uh, is actually it's a kind of relationship or it's a kind of uh, association where both uh, partners will get benefits from this association it means that partner a and partner b both will be benefited from this relationship from this association uh, mutualism or mutualistic associations are um, normally or usually they are, are most often they are obligatory obligatory mean the one will not survive without the other for example if a is not present b will not survive why because uh, during the course of evolution uh, the physiological dependence or uh, on each other uh, uh, has evolved to a very great degree and that's why one mutual will not survive without the other one so during the course of evolution it occurred that the physiological dependence has evolved to a greater degree and that's why one will not survive the presence without the presence of the other and the mutualisms are usually uh, obligatory and it's not like always obligatory but in most cases it is obligatory uh, let me uh, give you some examples uh, a very classical and beautiful example is that of the termites and uh, that of the married uh, flagellates now you know the uh, termites they feed on uh, wood which is actually a cellulose but unluckily these termites they don't have the enzyme cellulase in their uh, intestine and that's why they cannot digest the food they eat with without the help of these protozoans the married flagellates so if uh, the married flagellates are present in the intestine of the termite it will eat wood and it will survive now how both are benefited the termite uh, like uh, uh, having its food uh, digested with the help of the cellulase enzyme secreted by the married flagellates and married flagellates they also get food and also uh, has a home a house a shelter so both are benefited and it is obligatory because for example if you kill these uh, married flagellates somehow exposing the uh, termites to high temperature or high oxygen concentration so the, the, the termite will start to death even it will eating wood continue eating wood but it will swell out and will burst because uh, there is no digestive mechanism so uh, mutualistic uh, relationships are sometimes uh, uh, very very much obligatory like in case of the termites uh, this is the picture uh, here you can see the termite it's the gut the intestine and then from the gut a picture has been taken here you can see the married flagellates here and in this picture you can also see the married flagellates here these are the married flagellates uh, like variety of uh, mutualistic association can be found among different uh, like animals and bacteria and fungi algae and plants uh, like for example blood sucking leeches now let's uh, let take, uh, let's take the example of the blood sucking leeches they suck blood but actually they don't have any mechanism for their digestion uh, in their intestine so what happens they have like uh, some specialized uh, intestinal bacteria which are restricted to their guts and they actually do the digestion for them so 
the blood the, the leeches uh, they get the blood digested and get the food the bacteria have a home and they also get the food at least 20% or up to 70% of the insect species mites spiders crustaceans and nematodes they are infected with bacteria of the genus Wilbachia and they are very much important to each other they are obligatory to each other so like uh, filarial worms the nematodes the filarial nematodes uh, for example the Wachereria bincrofti the Oncocerca volvulus uh, which cause very serious human diseases are infected with Wilbachia species so if you kill the bacteria you kill the worm because the association is very much obligatory they, de they depend on each other the physiological dependence is very much important here and uh, um, it's not like uh, obligatory they everywhere uh, this uh, mutualistic uh, association will be physiological one this may be behavioral one if, for example like cleaning symbiosis it is a behavioral behavioral phenomena and uh, it occurs between certain crustaceans small fishes these are called cleaners so these crustaceans as small fishes it's a group which is collectively known as the cleaners and they most of the time they will establish or make a station where the large marine fishes will visit on the coral reef for cleaning purposes just when our car get dirty we get them to service station for a car wash or um, uh, we go for a haircut to the hairdresser shop uh, so exactly like that these larger fishes they will visit these uh, cleaning station for cleaning purposes of the ectoparasites of the dead cells or injured tissues or the fungi or the organism so these cleaners uh, uh, they, they have stations where these larger fish will go time to time when they need and the cleaner will remove ectoparasites so what happens here the cleaners actually get food and the larger fishes they get clean so both are benefited from this association um, and um, experiments have also shown that such behavioral uh, associations these mutualistic interactions are also obligatory because when you uh, remove the cleaners carefully from a particular area of a reef so you will see that the other uh, larger fish will leave that area too because there are no cleaners uh, here in this picture you can see this larger fish it is like being cleaned by this smaller crustacean and in this uh, picture you can see this larger fish the the smaller fish is uh, like cleaning the larger one so this is the cleaning symbiosis uh, in this uh, uh, video uh, i'm going to show you or play a video for you uh, recorded by jonathan berg uh, it is a very beautiful video uh, it will show you different kinds of mutualistic relationship so uh, watch carefully and observe closely uh, that how the cleaners uh, like establish a station who are the cleaners and how the larger fishes including the sharks and even the turtles uh, the, how they frequently visit these stations are and how they get clean so here's the video Today on Jonathan Bird's Blue World, Jonathan investigates cleaning stations where fish line up to be cleaned by other fish. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. never need to take a bath because they live in water but they do need to get clean 
Instead of using soap, they rely on the assistance of another animal. It may come as a surprise that fish even need to be cleaned, but fish get cuts station. and scrapes in the course of everyday life. The, the cuts get infected and itchy. Parasites sometimes here. irritate the their skin too. So even see. a fish needs a little skin skins. care. So they are not actually biting on the skin, they are actually removing the ectoparasites. And the that means a trip to a tissues. cleaning station. This is a place on the reef where one kind of animal cleans another. Cleaners are usually small fish or shrimp. Larger fish come in to get cleaned and wait for the attention of the cleaners. Sometimes fish even open their sensitive gills to the cleaners. Like a beauty parlor downtown, the cleaning station is a popular place. It keeps the cleaners busy from dawn to dusk with a steady supply of customers. When the cleaning station gets busy, customers have to line up and wait. Sometimes service can be downright slow. But patience pays off. This grouper's finally getting its gills cleaned. are so important that even top predators like barracudas won't eat them, but line up and wait for service. This is mutualistic symbiosis at its best. Not only do the larger fish get cleaned, but the cleaners get a meal. They eat the parasites and dead skin from the fish they clean. And it's an unspoken rule. Nobody eats the cleaner fish. On the Great Barrier Reef of Australia, there lives a rather large fish called a potato grouper. You can probably see the resemblance. And they're big. This one is off to the cleaning station. where a cleaner wrasse picks its nose. Talk about service. But the grouper doesn't really want me to watch. A moray eel doesn't like to leave her den during the day, so a pair of cleaner fish come to her. but sometimes the plucking of parasites hurts a little. Anemone fish don't dare leave the protection of their anemone to get cleaned by cleaner fish. And since the cleaner fish would be stung and killed by the anemone, they can't go to the anemone fish. What to do? In this case, a cleaner shrimp lives in the anemone with the fish, ready to spring into action whenever a fish needs cleaning. It's not a life without difficulty, however. are not the only animals to get cleaned. Sea turtles, manta rays, and even sharks line up for the services of cleaners. On a reef in the Philippines, a thresher shark with a tail as long as its body comes in from the open ocean to circle around its favorite cleaning station. Every morning, the sharks come here early for their cleaning. I 
tiny cleaner wrasses swarm around them for a few minutes. When the sharks are finished being cleaned, they leave the reef and swim back to the open sea. Nobody knows where the threshers go, but they'll be back to this very cleaning station tomorrow morning to be cleaned again. A few hundred miles away on a reef in Malaysia, a sea turtle is receiving the attention of a surgeon fish, which eats algae from her shell. Surgeon fish only eat plants, and the algae on this turtle's shell makes a delicious meal. And since all that algae can slow a turtle down, the fish is doing the turtle a favor by removing it. Everyone gets something out of this deal. When the tide is running at just the right speed in Yap, manta rays glide up to a coral head <coughs> and hover in the current like a runner on a treadmill. This allows them to maintain a spot right over the cleaning station so they can enjoy the benefits of cleaners as well. The cleaners go right in and out of their gills, cleaning off parasites like copepods. But of course, the real question is, can I go to a cleaning station? I don't look like a fish, but it's worth a try. I find a nice anemone on the island of Bonaire with a cleaner shrimp looking bored with no customers. Maybe my hand will look like a really pathetic fish. It doesn't take long for this cleaner shrimp to get right down to business picking over my hand. It's looking for dead skin and parasites. I hope there are no parasites. It doesn't hurt, but it does tickle. As it turns out, humans can get a cleaning at the cleaning station, but only if there are no fish around wanting cleaning. So if I ever decide to live in the ocean permanently, I'll never need soap again. And here is uh, another video uh, in which you can observe the mutualistic relationship between the warthogs and the mongoose. So here in this uh, association, the warthogs, uh, like they have ticks, they are, they are heavily infested with the ticks and the mongoose will come and will clean these warthogs of these ticks So and return the mongoose will get a very good proteinaceous meal, a healthy meal, and warthogs will be cleaned from such uh, uh, ticks. Warthogs are a common sight around these parts, and they're not to be messed with. Their tusks are formidable bits of hardware, used to fend off attacks by predators such as lions, and also fight between each other. They are very powerful pigs in these parts, a power that shouldn't be underestimated. An adult male warthog deliberately walks up to the banded brothers. The mob stand their ground. A mongoose could be seriously hurt with just one swipe of the warthog's tusks, and even a simple injury could spell the end of any mongoose. Still, they boldly head straight for it. As it turns out, they run a bit of a racket with the local warthogs on the way up. It's a cleaning racket. By allowing the mongoose to climb all over its body, the warthog has its ticks removed and the mongoose gets a protein-rich meal. Although the family do have to watch out for a hundred kilos of falling pig every now and again. 
This is a unique symbiotic relationship between two mammal species, and one which benefits both parties. The banded brothers make pretty quick work of their cleaning duties. Eventually, the warthog checks out of the mongoose spa. Uh, there is uh, one other example of the oxpecker, it's a bird, and the rhinoceros. So it's uh, not this association not only become between the oxpecker and the rhinoceros. The oxpecker may build this association with the zebras and many other like uh, uh, wild animals where the, the oxpecker will clean the rhinoceros and the other animals from the ticks and different other paras ectoparasites. Though the ox picker will get a meal and the animals will be like get cleaned. Um, now let's uh, talk about uh, commensalism. So commensalism is actually eating at the same table. One partner benefits benefits from the association, but the host is neither helped nor harmed. Now here it's like a, a different one from mutualism or uh, from parasitism one partner will get benefit but the other or you can say the host it will not, not be helped nor harmed there is no harm no helping for the host only the other partner the partner B will get benefit so the term means eating at the same table and many commensals relationships involve feeding on food wasted or not consumed by the host so in many cases you will see that the food that is like wasted from the partner a or it is not consumed by the partner a uh, the partner b will feed on the remaining food so there is no harm for the uh, partner a like uh, uh, pilot fish uh, nectarous species and remoras echinidae are examples of Commensals. So, Aremora is a slender fish uh, whose dorsal fin is modified into adhesive organ, a suction adhesive suction organ, which is uh, which it attached to the larger fish or a turtle or even a submarine. So, this Remora will attach its uh, slender uh, dorsal fin, which is modified into an uh, into adhesive organ. And with the help of that adhesive organ, it will attach itself to the larger fish, to a turtle, and even to the submarine. So, what happens? The remora gets free ride. Number one, uh, like it will get the free ride. So uh, there is no problem to the uh, the partner A, and uh, the scraps of food uh, from the partner A will also come in uh, to the remoras, and remora will get the scraps of the food. And also the free ride but it does not harm the host or rob it food so there is no robbing of food and no harm to the uh, host uh, some remoras are however mutuals so as we saw many remoras in the the, the video 
the joins on bird video uh, where most of the remoras were like mutuals but uh, some are like uh, commensals so because they clean the host of parasite and copepods so they are mutuals but here they do not do this business they do not clean the host of parasite of parasites and like copepods nothing they just like uh, attached itself to the bodies and uh, get free rides and the scraps of food so here is the larger fish and here is the remora uh, you can see the remora they, they, they have attached themselves to the bodies of the larger fish and they just get the free rides and the scraps of food like here in this uh, video you can see these remora they are attached to the body of this skates in the race so they have they, they are enjoying the free rides you can see them i think you can spot them right they are attached here with the help of a disc <coughs> So here what happens they get the free rides and the food wasted by the partner or the host uh, like uh, they are uh, eaten by them. So commensalism uh, may be uh, facultative in the sense that the commensal may not be required to participate in association to survive like stocks seriates of the genus verticilla are frequently uh, found on small crustaceans but they survive equally well on sticks and the same bond so sometime uh, like the commensalism is facultative you mean if they have a chance they will make this association uh, they will participate in the association if not it's okay no problem they will live their life like for example these verticilla they like for example the stocks seriates of the genus verticilla they frequently found on small crustaceans so they grow on small crustaceans but it's okay no problem if there are no crustaceans they will survive and they will like grow on the sticks in the same ponds so other forms uh, such as uh, epistylus species are evid evidently obligate commensals so, so on one side there are facultative commensals and on the other side there are evidently obligate commensals mean which cannot live uh, without the presence of the host because they are not found except on other organisms especially crustaceans so human harbor uh, uh, several species of commensals like uh, protozoans such as antimeba gingivalis so it's a commensal this amoeba lives in the mouth where it feeds on bacteria food particles the remaining food particles in our mouth and dead epithelial cells but it never harms the healthy tissues so it's a commensal adult tapeworms are universally regarded as parasite yet some uh, scientists have no known uh, known that they, there is no ill effect of these uh, tapeworms adult tapeworms to the host so they considered them as like uh, commensals thank you so much for uh, listening and watching this uh, lecture uh, don't just uh, sit around in uh, roam here and there just go and search for uh, as many as example of mutualism and uh, commensalism uh, go into the detail of the facultative commensals, commensals and uh, go for the detail of uh, facultative commensals.
obligatory commensals uh, also go into the to the study in detail the mutualistic relationship and go for many as many as example you can and study them uh, uh, take out your books the textbook uh, i told you the foundation of astrology and study this topic in detail from there uh, thank you so much uh, see you in the next lecture